Good evening everyone. It is Wednesday the 20th of January and we're going to go back into our Bible study again tonight on Hebrews chapter 10. Um, this is the third part of such of uh, this chapter and hopefully we will get it finished tonight. But just as we gather uh, this evening, let's just pause and let's talk to God as we pray. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you as we come to this part of the day. We want to thank you, first of all, for all the blessings that you have given to us this day. Thank you for your presence, your help, your support, your guidance. Lord, just that sense of you with us. Um, Lord, it's a difficult enough time at this, at this present moment in time with everything that's going on. And we really do need to know that you're with us. So thank you that you have been with us all of this day and that you will continue with us um, this evening. We just ask that you would help us to quieten and still our hearts as we come to your words, that you would help us to uh, be able to concentrate upon it, to be able to be challenged by it and learn from it, and through this to grow closer to you day by day, to have a closer walk with you, just to know that fellowship with you as Heavenly Father and as us as your children. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for how um, they care for one another. And Lord, may this be just a, a time of blessing, even in the midst of a pandemic. May we know truly a blessing from you. So Lord, thank you. Continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. So let's read together from Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to start reading at verse 26. And I'm just going to read it through to the end of the chapter and then we'll come and we'll look at it together. As usual, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, I don't know which translation you will have in front of you, but it's okay. It might sound slightly different, but it will mean the same thing. But let's hear God's word as it's read. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refuses to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and who have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. For we know the one who said, I will take revenge, I will pay them back. And he also said, the Lord, the Lord will judge his own people. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Think back in those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten, and sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. So don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now, so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will have received all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay, and my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Amen. And that's the end of Hebrews chapter 10. Let's have a look at those verses together. Verse 26 starts off, Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. It's very sad whenever you hear something like that because the author is writing about, well, you now know how you can be, how you will be saved. The only way that you can be saved 
you now know that it's through the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. And if you turn your back in that, if you, as it puts, deliberately continue sinning, it says there's no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. It's talking about those people who reject Jesus. The disciples and the early followers um, of Christ worked really hard in telling everyone they could about Jesus and about what he had done. That's partly one of the reasons why they were persecuted because they were so vocal with their faith. Um, one of the phrases which is used is they gossiped the gospel. You know, every opportunity they took, they, they were in conversation, but also their actions showed it as well. So they were talking about that. So the author here is telling us, you know, if you've heard this news, you now, you now know this news. And if you reject that news, there's nothing else for you. There's no other way which you will have your sins forgiven. The only way is through Jesus and through what he has done. So if you, if you reject him, do you love you? It's basically what he's saying. In verse 27, it says, there is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. So if we reject Jesus and what he has done, then we face judgment. And judgment here talks about the raging fire. Now, fire is a symbol which runs right the way through the Bible. It's a, a symbol which, in one way, you could look at it as a, a symbol of purification, of purifying. And in another way, it's a symbol of um, judgment. So at different times, you think of fire cleansing. Um, it talks in the New Testament about it being refined uh, by, by the fire. So that pure gold that is refined, so you burn off the things which are useless. But fire also comes as God's judgment. Um, offerings, sacrifices were consumed with fire to make up for the sins of the people. So fire was the judgment upon that offering. Fire was used on Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy them. Uh, and, and that was a very powerful symbol of the time. But even whenever you turn to Revelation, Revelation chapter 20, uh, it talks about judgment fire, about how um, the evil one, Satan is judged by fire and how his followers are judged by fire are thrown into fire. Fire's not pleasant. If you've ever been burnt, you will realise that. Um, you know, it's bad enough if you get a steam burn or if you touch um, the cooker and it's hot. But actual fire, uh, you, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it is terrible. It, it instills fear nearly, doesn't it? Um, so to think about judgment in terms of fire is a way of letting us know just how terrible a thing judgment is and how we do not want to be judged. I mean, we don't know if, if the fire, which the New Testament talks about, is symbolic of judgment or if it will be by fire. It doesn't matter anyway. All we know is that there is judgment and that's what the author's trying to get to here, the writer in verse 27. There's only the terrible expectation of God's judgment. You know, he said, and he puts it into context for people. Uh, and again, we will miss a, a, a bit of this context because we're not Jewish. and We don't follow Jewish law or Israelite law as it was in those days. But as we read through the law of Moses, as it's called, the law which God handed down, we can understand it. It says, for anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. So you, if you had done something wrong, something very severe, if you blasphemed God, um, the punishment was death. And it was death by stoning. Uh, it wasn't pleasant. And it was on the, the word of two or three witnesses who were able to say, yep, I heard them say that. Um, that's right, they, they did do that and they did blaspheme God. I mean, that, that was part of the problem with um, Jesus' trial in that the witnesses didn't say the same things 
uh, and why then Jesus you know, was found not guilty. There was no reason, uh, but then handed back. So, you know, that, that's the law of Moses coming through. Um, the law that God had put down, that you don't speak against God, and you don't blaspheme God, and if you do, the punishment is severe. So the writer says, just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if they were common and unholy. They've insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God mercy to you. It's a warning that, you know, if you reject what Jesus has done, you are belittling what he has done. You are... Um, turning away from it you're trampling it underfoot you're saying that it wasn't something special um that it wasn't something that was incredible which it was i know that that's part of the problem that we see at times whenever people talk about um having to work their way through into heaven i mean our actions can't there's only one action which can bring us to heaven and that's the blood of christ you know it doesn't matter what we do it's worthless it's all about what jesus did for us and so again the writer gives a warning for we know the one who said and, and there's two quotes here taken from deuteronomy chapter 32 um, verses 35 and 36 which says i will take revenge i will pay them back and the lord will judge his own people you know it's incredible um whenever we think about what God has said to us. It's incredible whenever we think about the, the warnings and the teachings that we get the whole way through the Bible. Um, because God gives us every chance and every opportunity to turn away from sin and to turn towards him. You know, and it's incredible too whenever you see people who talk about, oh, the God of the Old Testament is not the God of the New Testament. Because the Old Testament is all about judgment. But the New Testament is all about love and forgiveness. They haven't read Hebrews. They haven't read Revelation. They haven't read what Jesus said. That he, whenever he said, I am the way, the truth and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. You know, that's, that's the same God. There only is one God who runs right the way through the Bible. And to understand God fully, we need to read all of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You know, sometimes we wonder why it's there, but it, it's there to put everything into context to put everything into um, the reality of the time and to teach us you know whenever you even see the genealogy of all the people it shows us that the people matter to God just like we still matter to him and when you see the line of Jesus it's proving that Jesus is from the, the line of David uh, and, and letting you know just you know where that all is so everything fits together so whenever the writer here quotes the Old Testament and says, I will take revenge, I will pay them back, the Lord will judge his own people. You know, it's letting us know it's one God right the way through. But there's also a warning in here as well for the Israelites or for the Jewish people. The Lord will judge his own people. They are not exempt from God's judgment. They have to follow and obey God just like everybody else. Um, they don't get a, a, a free pass into heaven, so to speak. You know, if they have rejected Jesus, then they are just as guilty and they will be judged. And, and that's what the author wants them to realise. You know, you might be an Israelite. You might say that you follow Jewish law, but you've rejected Jesus. And all the Old Testament writings are all about Jesus and about what he'll do for you. And he wants them to know that. And then there's that single verse, verse 31. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He just lets that verse sit there and just says, you do not want to be judged by God. That's what you don't want because it is not good. And then he wants to encourage us to keep going. So after all of that, he wants to put in an encouragement, which is about keep going. Just think back in those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten. Sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. 
Yes, following Jesus will cost you. It's not a case of if problems come your way, but it's a case of when problems come your way. It's not a case of will I possibly face persecution in my life, but it's a case of whenever you do face persecution, whenever you do face those difficulties, keep on going. And it's about how we're in this together, because part of what it says here is, is so appropriate and so encouraging. It says in verse 34, you suffered along with those who were thrown into jail and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. It's about how whenever one part of the family suffers, all of the family suffers. We, Because we're all part of the body of God as it's put in the, in the Bible. You know, if, if, if you put your hand into the fire, all of you feels that pain. You know, that pain is transmitted to your brain and you feel that. If you cut yourself, you feel that. Um, you know, and, and the bot, all of the body suffers as a result. So at times, whenever we see things happening to others, and it's not happening to us, we, we, we should feel that connection. So we should want to support that part of the body. Now, support comes in different ways. It can be through prayer. Um, and that, that is our best tool. Whenever we see something happening, we pray, we bring it to God, we bring those people to God. You know, and that's what we do when, when, when friends share to us about you know, troubles that they're going through and they say, please pray for me. You, you do, you pray for them, you bring them to God. Um, whenever you see somebody in need, you try and help that need. Now, now, we're very good at doing that even in a worldly sense. Think of food bank uh, uh, and how we, how we support that. Think of what we did in church at Christmas time with Belfast City Mission. Uh, and the selection boxes and the gift cards that were bought to give out to families and children who were in need. You know, you, we help one another who's suffering. But this is the thing, it says, whenever all these things were taken from you, you accepted it with joy. How can you accept suffering with, with joy? How can you accept somebody taking everything off you with joy? Well, it's because you know it's only temporary. It's because you know that there is something better waiting for you. And that's what the writer says. You knew that there are better things waiting for you that will last forever. Whenever we have trusted God, we know that our hope lies in heaven. Our reward lies in heaven. We are working towards heaven. Now, it doesn't mean to say we rush through this life and say, I want out of this. We don't because the life that we have here, um, we are here for a reason. And we are here to be a living witness for God and to get involved in what he, uh, his work and where he has placed us. Sometimes that's difficult. Other times it seems easy, but it's always about living out for him. So the author wants us, probably because maybe these people are, are having a hard time, he wants us to keep going and he wants them to keep going. He says, don't throw away this confident trust you have in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patience, endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. You know, keep going. In the midst of all of it, keep going. Now, that, that's actually very appropriate for us in terms of what's going on in the world at the moment. Um, we're in a lockdown and if, like a lot of other people, like ourselves, if, if you're just so frustrated this time. You know, we've talked about, I've talked with different people, well, maybe it's because it's lockdown in winter, not summer. You can't sit out in the garden the same. You can't enjoy the fresh air the same. It's colder. Um, maybe it's just the fact that we're in lockdown again. Who knows? But, you know, all the bodies say, keep going. All our health organisations say, keep going because we're helping one another. Uh, we're, 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 we will beat this and we're going to get the vaccine out there and we're keeping our numbers down to help our, help, help our health service. And we can understand that. But in biblical terms, we've got an even bigger spur to keep going for. We've got heaven to keep going for. We've got that home which Jesus is building for us. And when the time is right, he will come and take us there. Not before, not too late, but at just the right time. So the, the writer says, keep on going. 
And then he quotes a bit from Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Now, if you go back and if you look at this, um, you might see it, it's quoted slightly differently. Uh, it's because of the fact that uh, at times whenever they're quoting in the New Testament, it's the, um, the Greek version. Whereas whenever we're reading it in the Old Testament, it is the Hebrew version. So you do get at times slight differences in the language. So don't be surprised if you, if you turn back to Habakkuk chapter 2 and you read verses 3 and 4, it will seem slightly differently, but the message is still the same. What's saying is still the same. It's just the translations from the language. It says there, for in just a little while, the coming one, that's Jesus, will come and not delay. And my righteous, righteous ones will live by faith but I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. God doesn't want us to turn away from him, either before we come to him, or he doesn't want us to turn away after we've come to him. You know, if we never receive Christ at all, then we face judgment. If we have accepted Jesus, but through some struggles in life we fall away, well then, the Bible says we'll give an account of ourselves. Uh, and we will, we will give an account of that and we'll have to, um, I mean, what that means we don't know, uh, but we just know we will have to give an account. But God doesn't want us to fall away. He doesn't want us to lose hope. He doesn't want us to lose that connection with him because he wants to encourage us. He wants us to grow in our faith and in our understanding in our relationship. The final verse says, but we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. You know, in Revelation, in chapter 20, it talks about the second death. Um, at judgment time, whenever Jesus has come back and then it starts to go into the new heaven and the new earth. And there's a number of scholars who would say that at that point, those who are judged, when it talks about them being thrown into the pit of fire, the sense is the second death is the destruction of their soul um, and they will they will cease to be but for those of us who have given our lives to God then we live in eternity with God now again we can't get our heads around what that eternity means we can't even get our heads around heaven you, when you try to picture heaven when you're reading Revelation it, it's just mind-blowing it's incredible all we know is that we will be with God and we will enjoy that and we will enjoy being in his presence and we will not have suffering. We will not have the hardships and the different things that we face now. We will not have illnesses uh, uh, and, you know, we will not have death and, and loss and mourning. You know, it's, it's, it's a complete change and that's what he wants us to have and to look forward to. He doesn't want us to, to lose sight of that. He doesn't want us to lose hope. He wants us to keep going. You know, maybe that is the most appropriate thing to say at this time, keep going. It is difficult at this time. There are so many people in hospital. There are so many people who have lost their lives to COVID or to COVID related illnesses. There's so many people who have died of broken hearts from being separated from their families. There are so many of our church family who are mourning lost ones, who are, are mourning the loss of loved ones. God doesn't want us to lose sight and to lose hope. He wants us to keep our eyes fixed on what comes beyond this life. And the fact that yes, this is temporary, but heaven is eternal. He wants us to, to, to keep that, as it puts it there in, in New Living Translation, the confident hope that we can hand have confidence it's not a whim it's not a oh if only but it's confidence it's something you can rely on something which is a guarantee that we will be in heaven with God that we will know his healing his glory his peace wonder how you feel about that today wonder does that give you peace now does that give you reassurance now? And maybe if you think about a loved one who you've lost, who you know um, was a believer in Christ, 
does that give you that assurance of knowing where they are today and to know that they are at peace with God in heaven? I trust that it does. And I trust that this passage spurs us on to keep on going. Do not lose hope. Do not lose faith. But even through all the ups and downs, to realise that we're in this together, that we support one another and that we are part of the body of God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are part of your family. Whenever we accept Christ as our saviour, we are adopted into your family. We are your sons and daughters. And you look after us. You care for us. And you have a home for us. Lord, for those hearts that are breaking today because of lost ones, lost loved ones, please bring your comfort. Please bring your peace. Lord, as we trudge through the, this hard life at this time as, as, as maybe we have difficulties Lord help us to keep lifting our eyes from our feet and to lift our eyes heavenward and to fix them upon where we are heading eventually to be with you may that give us joy may that give us a spring in our step may that just give us the strength that we need day by day to live for you Father thank you now and always in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks folks for joining in. It's been lovely to have you watch along for this. Um, over the next few weeks we'll do the, the remaining chapters of Hebrews as well. Um, so I will see you next Wednesday at the same time. In the meantime, take care and God bless. Bye.